Everything. My spark is restored, and my body is stronger than ever. I live. I live. Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures, along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and Toy Stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors. So make sure and check out ToyHex.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is 1998's Beast Wars Transmetal Tarantulas. This is a figure that I sold off years ago when I sold over half of my collection to solely focus on G1 that I pretty much immediately regretted because this is an awesome looking Transformers figure. And I have actually been hunting one for years. And I kind of quit looking for a while, but thanks to the generosity of a subscriber who sent me some old Beast Wars figures, my interest in Beast Wars has been reignited. And I was hunting down a tarantula and actually found this guy 100% complete for a really good deal on eBay. I made the seller an offer and he accepted and I am so happy to have this figure back in my collection. So now, without further ado, let's take a look at this treacherous arachnid. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> In beast mode, Transmetal Tarantulas is, of course, a robotic spider. And that was kind of the thing with the Transmetal figures. The beast mode was more robotic, while the robot mode was more organic. And I gotta tell you guys, this is a beautiful looking figure. The burgundy, the orange, the purple, the green, just really make this guy pop. And I love the vacuum metal. That looks so good. Of course, a big problem with these transmittal figures is the vacuum metal tends to chip. And unfortunately, I've got a chip right there. So it's really not too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Another thing the transmittals were known for was for some reason, they had their name tampographed onto them. So I don't know, maybe they were at a meeting or something. But taking a closer look at this figure, Beautiful paint applications, lots and lots of sculpted detail all over. I mean, this guy just looks fantastic. Paint applications are top notch. You got the silver right here for the exhaust, the green there on the back wheel, the green there on the back of the figure, green there and there. And of course, with well, eyes, that's plastic. So yeah, this guy looks awesome. Articulation. The legs are all on a ball joint, but they're only attached right there to the main body. So they're only going to move around like so. I wish there was more ball joints on the other joints, but it is what it is. He can still kind of pose, but the body is way too heavy for the legs to hold up. I've tried a couple different times and it, it just doesn't work. The body's too heavy. So you just kind of smash him down, but he still looks really, really good. Now, the, about the only thing I really don't like about the spider mode is the extended fangs right here. I wish they could have brought those in a little tighter, but still, it's not too bad. It's exactly how he looked on the show. And he actually, when he was in vehicle mode, would sometimes drop these down as stabilizers. They will not work like that with this figure. And I'll go over that more in his vehicle mode. 
which the vehicle mode really isn't as much of a vehicle. It's just kind of like a transport for him. And to do that, you just go underneath the figure, flip this little wheel out right here. Then on the back, you're gonna pull this out and rotate around and kind of push it down. It'll snap in place. So now he's kind of got a motorcycle mode. I mean, it's it's goofy, but hey, that was Transmetals. Now for me, I like to kind of bring the three back legs up and move the front legs forward. And there you go. So you can drive around, quickly go from one place to the other. And like I said, in the show, he would drop these front fangs down as stabilizers, but that does not work for the toy. You can, however, stand him up if you position the back legs on the ground and give him the illusion that he is standing up in his motorcycle mode. So now let's get Tarantulas transformed into robot mode. Now we'll start the transformation off with Tarantulas back in his spider mode. And the first thing you're gonna do is take the leg sections right here and fold those up over his back like so. Go ahead and turn Tarantulas around now and you're gonna separate the fangs, which are the legs, and this will release the wheel. Go ahead and put that to the side. You can flip the feet down. And then right here, these sections, you're gonna fold these out. These will be his arms later on. Now, this wheel section right here, you're gonna split this apart like so. Rotate this around. It only goes one way. So rotate that and open those up so you've got that going on right there. Now, turn Tarantulas over and flip this whole section with his legs down. And this will actually snap into place, forming his lower body. Now you're gonna take the top section right here where the spider's eyes were. You can now see Tarantulas' head. Go ahead and pull those up and this will snap in place just like so. Now you're gonna bring these wheel halves up and those will actually soft click into place. And then you're gonna bring the arm sections around kind of up and under the wheel and this little section right here, this is going to soft click in place as well. Kind of difficult to get around that wheel section. So there's one arm and get around there, there we go. So now you got arms attached, the legs down, go ahead and bring these back panels all the way down, and then you're gonna rotate at the knee, just like so. And there we have Tarantulas transformed into his robot mode. And I am going to have to zoom out just a little bit. In robot mode is where I think Tarantulas really shines. This is one imposing looking Predacon. I love the spider legs hanging off the back. It really gives him an intimidating silhouette. Now, taking a closer look at the figure, head sculpt is fantastic and very close to what we had in the show. All of the collars carry over from the spider mode except he does lose a lot of the vacuum metal. It's all there on his back and down here on the feet, though you can see it right there below his waist. But everything else looks so good. And as I mentioned earlier, the robot mode now carries over a lot of the organics. If you look, you can see the detail there in the legs. You can see the molded hair, I guess the spider hair, the details there on the face. The abs, I mean, this is one cool looking figure. Got a little bit of waffling going on right there in the forearms. Love the claws, but I do wish there was rotation with the wrists because he's kind of in this constant hands out pose, kind of like a world dominating pose there. So it looks pretty cool like when you're posing him like that, but any other pose, it, it just looks weird. Love these shoulder pauldrons here. They look really, really good, but they do hinder the mobility of the arm. The arm can go out and in and almost do a complete 360, but it is gonna hit those. 
I do wish these locked in place, but still, it's pretty cool how it works out. There's the molded exhaust from vehicle mode or the spider mode. I love that. I just, the details on this figure just blow my mind. And even right there, if you look underneath the back portion of the spider, you can see all the nice molded details there as well. So, you know, they didn't skimp on the details with this figure whatsoever. Now, moving on to more articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it can look up, it can look down, it can do a complete 360, though mine's a little tight. We already saw the articulation in his shoulders, and he does also have an elbow bend. Legs can go out, they can go in, they can go forward, they can go back. There is a knee bend, and there is an ankle tilt. Not a sideways tilt, but you see what I mean. And what else is really impressive about Tarantulas is he's got this massive backpack, but still he's not overly top heavy. You can pose him fairly easy, and that's thanks to these big old feet and those massive heel spurs. More detail down here, just look at that. He's got the spikes there on the leg, more hair details. I love this guy, he is so cool. Now you can take the wheel right here and you rotate the front part around and it forms a blaster. Yes, a blaster. It kind of looks like a buzz saw or pizza cutter, but in the show that actually shot lasers. Not really sure how that works, but hey, it's Cybertronian technology. So yeah, an awesome, awesome looking robot mode. Now, something I miss showing during the transformation is Tarantulas does have a rub symbol hid right there behind his abs. So I'm not sure why they always hid the rub symbols for the Beast Wars figures, but his is right there. And it's really warm in my office, so that's shining through really, really well. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is 1998's Beast Wars Transmetal Tarantulas with Transmetal Megatron, a figure who's had that exact same pose for over a decade. Thanks to Gold Plastic Syndrome, I'm afraid to move him. Beast Wars Fuser Quick Strike, and Kingdom Black Arachnia. 1998's Beast Wars Transmetal Tarantulas is a fantastic Transformers toy. I love this guy. He's got a great beast mode, great robot mode, fantastic sculpted details. I mean, he's just a ton of fun. My only real complaints is the shoulder pauldrons that kind of get in the way and don't really lock in place, and the fact that his hands are in this weird upward pose. But other than that, it's easy to overlook because, man, this guy looks awesome on your shelf. So there you go guys, 1998 Transformers Beast Wars Transmetal Tarantulas. So, does the 1998 Beast Wars Transmetal Tarantulas belong in your collection? Absolutely. If you're a Beast Wars fan, you have to have this figure. I mean, he is awesome. Great beast mode, great robot mode. I can't rave about the robot mode enough. And he will look so good on your shelf. And I think you would actually look really good with the modern figures. I hope that we get a re-release of the Transmetal version. I know a new Legacy, the regular Tarantulas is coming out. But man, how cool would it be to get this guy? Now, trying to find one of these guys on the secondary market can be kind of a pain because his wheel weapon is near impossible to find by itself. I know my buddy Bert the Stormtrooper has been looking for years for just the wheel gun, and I think it goes on eBay from anywhere to $40 to $60 by itself. Now, I didn't even pay that for this complete figure. So if you are hunting a tarantulas, make sure you buy him 100% complete, or you may be looking for quite some time to get that gun right there. So yeah, tarantulas, highly, highly recommended. Now, there's uh, some things I want to show you guys that I got in the mail today that is just too weird not to show off. Now, if you're a Transformers fan, Transformers collector, you pretty much get anything Transformers. I mean, I've got Funko Pops, statues, 
lunch boxes, posters, glasses, what have you. I was on Entertainment Earth two weeks ago and saw these and had to get them because they are just gloriously weird and are going to be great for summertime. Geeky Tiki ceramic glasses or ceramic mugs. So there we have Optimus Prime. He holds six or no, he holds 18 ounces. And like I said, he's ceramic. Really, really awesome looking figure. All blue except for the red Autobot logo right there. So I got Prime and I got Megatron all gray with a purple Decepticon logo right there. <laughs> he not got his fusion cannon. These are awesome. I dig it. He also holds 18 ounces. But the one that I like the most, my favorite, Jason Voorhees. I love the fact that he's got more paint applications and this guy just looks awesome. And he holds 24 ounces. So Jason is going to get you drunk. So let's open this up just so you can see what these things are like. Now, if you didn't know, I'm a huge Friday the 13th fan. My name is Jason. I was born on Friday the 13th. There's my replica mask. There's all my Jason figures. Where are they? Right there. So, yeah, love me some Friday the 13th. So, let's get this thing out so I can show you guys. But, yeah, this is so cool. That's awesome. I got to get some big long straws for this, but I love the detail on these things. I've never heard of these before. I wish the uh, machete was painted, but yeah, these are awesome, and I am so glad that I got a hold of them. So, uh, guys, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I, knew, I now have a new thanks button that YouTube has added, and I also have channel memberships. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's support like yours that helps keep this channel going. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime signing out. Hoo-ah! Now, let's find something to put in this bad boy.